Welcome to Psychology to Daf. We are in Gemara Rosh Hashanah, Daf Lama Gimel. And today we're going to talk about hitting bottom and the shattering of rationalizations. The Gemara Nawid Beis tells us that a source for understanding what the true blow of the shofar sounds like comes from Sisera's mother's wailing. Uh, as we, you know in the story in uh, Shoftim, Perik, uh, Perik Hamishi, the fifth Perik, the, uh, the evil general Sisera was delaying from uh, coming back from battle, and his mother, yes, even an evil general has a mother, his mother was worried about him, and she was waiting and looking out the window and waiting to see if he would come, and he never came, and then she finally finds out that, uh, that he was killed in battle, and she has these heartbroken sighs, sobs, and wails, and that is supposed to be the same sound of the chauffeur. Now, even an evil general has a mother, and like all mothers, uh, they worry about their kids. So I just have to digress for a minute to tell you an interesting story about my father, uh, Zasal, who um, in his uh, younger years, he was a chaplain at the uh, Atlanta Federal Penitentiary. And uh, one of his, uh, so to speak, clients was uh, the famous gangster, Mickey Cohen. And he had to visit Mickey Cohen after he was terribly beat up within an inch of his life. When my father visited him, he described him as covered from head to toe in casts and bandages. And he said, uh, Rabbi, tell my mom I'm okay. So whenever my father would tell over that story, he'd start to cry. And then he'd go on to explain how Mickey sent his machine gunner, Chopsy, to Eretz Yisrael in order to teach the Irgun how to fire automatic weapons. And this is kind of reminiscent of the Gemara Brachas on Nun Zayin, Amad Aleph, Afilo Rekonun Shabach Malayim Mitzvahs Karimon. Even the most empty amongst the Jewish people are still full of mitzvahs like a pomegranate. Some New Yorkers may remember the infamous Joel Steinberg, who was in prison for beating his six-year-old daughter, Lisa Steinberg. I remember as a child, his mother said in one interview, he is a good boy. He writes to me every day. Well, this is a Jewish mother, but I digress. Back to Sisera and the chauffeur. Years ago as a bacher, I heard Moshe Weinberger explain the idea as follows. Sisera's mother kept looking out the window to see when his son would return from battle. And as time passed, of course, she became more nervous. But her friends comfort her by saying, he's probably just delayed because of all the spoils and riches he's gathering. When she finally finds out he's dead, something that deep down she suspected all along, her hopes and rationalizations were shattered. This was her deep cry, and this is the chauffeur representing our deep cries, knowing we're out of excuses. I had a similar idea from Rabbi Nachum Ganak in the name of Rav Salvechik. We read from the story of Chana and Rosh Hashanah because of her heartfelt prayers, which came about from a sense that she must store herself fully at God's mercy. The Rav's interpretation of the story was that when Elkanah told her, Chana, why are you crying? Why aren't you eating? Why are you sad? Am I not more devoted to you than ten sons? Uh, and that's described over there in Shmuel, per, Shmuel Alf, Perak Alaf, Pasuk Ches. Uh, this did the opposite of comforting her. She suddenly realized that Alkana gave up. Perhaps in the back of her mind, she was counting on Alkana's prayers. But now, all the rationalizations were shattered. She hit rock bottom and knew it was only up to her and God. That is when her prayers went into overdrive.